I like to call the um, City of Castle Hills Parks and Projects Commission uh, to order. Today is September 10th and it is 10 o'clock. Um, welcome. Today, our agendas, agenda two, is approval of minutes from August 31st, 2022 meeting. Uh, do we have a discussion? Did anybody have any um, thing they want to add? It looks good. I move that we accept the minutes from our last meeting. I suck it. Uh, I'll approve or. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's approved. Um, oh, today we do have a quorum. Sorry. Uh, we have Victor Sylvia. Uh, Jack Joyce is here. Um, Madison Dillon, uh, Skip McCormick, and Cindy Martinez. Uh, all right. And uh, Matt Dillon is uh, absent. So we the morning. Uh, all right, so let's move on. So that's approved the minutes from August 31st. Uh, number three, presentation and discussion on feedback input from the Parks and Projects meeting held on August 31st, 2022, which presented the Commons conceptual plan related to potential improvements to the City of Castle Hills Commons. Um, so we'll open it up. Okay. Thanks, Bernard. Maybe I can just sort of run through Matt's notes to remind us of what we heard and make sure we all agree with his uh, summary of it. Um, it seems like the seemed to be the most popular of the items that we discussed. And um, I think there may be a couple of scoping issues that we need to resolve as we move ahead with playgrounds. Um, the original design that Terra Nova did suggested two playgrounds, one for the little ones, the toddlers, two to five, and then one for the older kids. So I think we just need to clarify what it is we're doing, whether it's one or two. Um, and another question with respect to that is the fencing. Fencing had been proposed to keep the little ones from running out into the street. Second item was a, uh, a shade structure. And that seemed to be well received. Um, and there's, again, we have to scope a little bit in the sense that there is seems to be some support for a larger one that could be used, maybe a fiesta, and people could put their booths within the larger one, get their shade that way. But also a series of smaller ones, more intimate ones, you know, just sort of plotted around the commons. So we just need to kind of, I guess, scope that and define that a little bit better than it's defined now as well. I'm sorry, Skip. Uh, and I tend to, I'm, I'm a low talker anyway, so my wife is after me all the time. Uh, anyway, yeah, there's a little bit of scoping needed with respect to the shade structures as well, because um, we did seem to have advocacy for both a large shade structure and a number of smaller ones, which to me makes a lot of sense. But anyway, we probably ought to define that so that we can get some get our engineers to help us with pricing and then present maybe next month, present something to council and say, here's what we think. Um, the idea of a pavilion seemed to be popular and the idea of a community garden as well. The uh, splash pad was not popular. To my surprise, the... Uh, the basketball court was not popular. The sport court was not popular either. I mean, that's that's what the folks told us, but that's, anyway, that's the way it is. Uh, and then there are a couple other things I think that we ought to talk about. And one of them is restrooms. The idea of the restroom was brought up and actually I got a note from Ms. Crawford ahead of time proposing that we need to think about restrooms. So that's something we need to think about. Um, I might mention that as part of the comprehensive plan, Mr. Middleman and I have worked on a new design for this building 
which flips the community room to this side and puts restrooms on this side. But that, of course, yes, Cindy. So I always thought, and I think I was talking to Bernard, that these restrooms were always open when we had functions. Is that not the case? Or we just need more or for when the city hall is closed? Uh, no, generally, um, it's always been accessible here in the lobby. Um, the only time, you know, we had it closed was uh, when city hall was completely closed due to COVID. Um, but anytime I think there's been an event, you can use the uh, lobby. I, I, so that's, I was just surprised to hear that people mm -hmm. were asking for restrooms because I thought these were yeah. accessible. Yeah, the, the only thing maybe is, people don't know it. I was going to say the only, and, and I know that Mr. Joyce and Mr. Middleman have been working on different ideas for the um, building here and the concept. But one of the things that PD's always told us is to sort of that, that it does not secure back there. Um, and so the idea would be sort of to flip those bathrooms to where public access and there's a door right there. Um, that's the only thing that's been sort of um, the downside to having access to the bathrooms, especially when you can go right behind dispatch. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the dysfunctional things about this building is the location of the public restrooms in the midst of the police department. You know, but yes, uh, they're accessible during times. But anyway, maybe we need to get the word out. But um, I don't know. I I remember when I got our guys were little. If they had to go, they had to go. Right, right. You didn't have time to trek across a big building like this and get to the restrooms. The restrooms need to be there. That's just my opinion. But in any event, um, that's something that's at best years off. You know, it has to go through the approval process and it's going to be millions of dollars, of course, to renovate this thing. So do we want to do it or not? And do we, you know, it's going to take a long time to work that all out. Right. And then the answer may be no. Who knows? And, and I'm not against it. I just wondered, you know, how come I, I was just surprised that was a concern because I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. But um, so it would seem that some sort of interim solution would be suggested. Bernard was suggesting maybe porta potties. Uh, that's a possibility. I don't know if there's a sort of a, is there sort of an upgraded porta potty? Does anybody know something that's a little nicer than those? There's plastic like a things? trailer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was just thinking a low risk. Um, see if yeah, the, the feasibility of a restroom out there. And but some people don't like using porta potty, so you really can't mm -hmm. like judge uh, what the use will be. Uh, but if people want it, I mean, I want it. So, and it, I don't think it needs to be a lot. It just needs to be one stall. I mean, we, you know, it doesn't need to be a. Uh, there's not a lot of traffic set when. Yeah. Yeah. Sewer system and all that. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we could probably really do it with the price, just so we all have that. Have it. Could the engineers do that, Ryan, or would you do that yourself? <laughs> I would rely on engineers. <laughs> I can't get all the things that we want. Yeah. But, uh, I think the most important is um, for an engineer to work with. Uh, fair design so they can uh, under the roof put this together. Pretty simple structure with that and some folks. Plus, you know, I can call the city or two and just find out how much they cost them at the time, figure out where we go from there. Mm -hmm. And what about the cost to maintain them, clean them? Uh, I'd probably say minimal. I mean, you know, it's more of just cleaning and making sure. Can't see a lot of maintenance involved. 
Yeah, that's a good question, though, because if it gets a lot of use on weekends when there's nobody around to look after it, it could get nasty. Anyway, it's a good, we need to think about that. But you should, you know, most of the time, parks like that have, they're away from, they're mostly a neighborhood park or something like that, like some cities. But here, I mean, being next to the police department, I, mean, I can't see a lot of vandalism or problems. You know? Yeah, from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like my previous city, for instance, there was a time they actually locked it overnight uh, and then opened it up back in the weekends uh, because of that problem. Uh, and then that caused a lot of problems because people complained that it was successful. Plus the time that you had to send someone out to unlock those doors and do all of that. Uh, so, you know, I don't think you have to really secure it 24 seven because of where we are right now. Yeah. But I would say minimal maintenance is minimal upkeep. Mm -hmm. Very well, thank you. So then the other, I guess, more uh, capital intensive idea that came out that people seemed to like was the idea of the solar panels. And, um, you know, and that, that, that seems to me like that might be a, another task for our engineers to help us figure that out because I don't have a clue about solar panels. You know, there's, there's good ones, there's bad ones. My brother got them a few years ago, and they've been down for two years now. They broke. <laughs> and the manufacturer's given them a hard time about getting them fixed. So it's, uh, it, it's just something we need to be very careful about. I think it has tremendous potential to save energy. I'm sure Mr. Montemayor would want solar panels everywhere. But... Um, you know, we just, I, I would suggest we ask the engineers to get us kind of a feasibility type study that looks at where we might put them for one thing, how many we need. Temper, uh, like shade structure versus the building. Yes, yeah. exactly, Cindy, exactly. Um, yeah, sure, sure. But... Um, and, and and I guess at what point would it make sense? I mean, if you have if you have five panels, how much how much energy do you save versus if you have put them on this building and you have fifty of them or whatever it is, you're going to save a lot more. I mean, could that be part of the feasibility, Ryan? Is just you know what what would be an advantageous investment for us in terms of how many we need want to buy? Uh, solar panels, yeah. Mm -hmm. what, I mean, all three of these are for two to twelve. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's and you know, just so everybody, I you know, uh, obviously adopting the budget Tuesday night, I took out the line item for you know, dollars related to the comments because I think based on the town hall and y'all's work, that can be programmed in at any time. Um, so. If we in two months say it was a good idea for shade structure, everything we want, we all want to recommend, we can just have council just approve that and the dollars taken out from the budget and use it this year as well. So it doesn't necessarily nice. have to be programmed in this year. So, um, you had originally thought about uh, taking it from the ARP funds, is that? Yes, that still is from the ARP, but that can be taken out at any time. Uh, it can be taken out this year through a budget. Um, adjustment, but regardless, I took I zeroed that out um, for the ARPA money for the comment improvement until we have sort of an idea. And and I had put a hundred thousand in just because um, you know we were looking at about thirty or forty thousand for the playground, and then probably another forty thousand for shade structure and then construction and tenancy and all that. But uh, I think now that the, the mayor and some others have raised the money for the playground. Uh, okay, thank you, Ryan. Now, does that suggest, and this is for the committee to decide based on what Ryan is saying, so we're looking at one playground for the, the older kids rather than one for the little toddlers as well? Yes. At uh, this point. 
I was, yeah, I think okay. we were thinking one okay. closer to the uh, fire department um, right. crosswalk area. Um, just one, you said two to 12 uh, yeah. ages. Yeah, the, they're fairly small in footprint. So, oh, we we're talking about shade structures above that too. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think, did Patsy ask you about the playground at Cambridge? I've never yes. seen that one. So right, right. It, it was a wooden one uh, built by the community. Oh, wow. Uh, so she was, she wanted me to check it out. Um, and that's an idea too, uh, to get the community involved to uh, build a playground, which is. <laughs> I don't think that's feasible. I know. <laughs> yeah, but I just, yeah, I don't think it's realistic practicality yeah. of it. Right, right. But right. I do think, yeah, one playground for all ages should be fine because what ends up is the taller pieces. I think the older kids are on there and then yeah. on the perimeter is the littles. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so for me, uh, the fencing idea around the playground, uh, in my imagination, it was to block it off, like kind of like a half moon, the fence around the playground, just so the kids won't dart out into the street. So it's not fencing all the way around it. It's just so there's a, a layer of safety. Uh-huh. Uh huh. It doesn't have to be big, maybe three foot, uh, broad iron, you know, just the slats. Or I, I'm just, Ryan has a better eye for that. So. It doesn't have to be a prison fence. Yeah, right, right. Can be. Yeah. But... <laughs> Hopefully, better than chain link. No. A nice iron, wrought iron fence or something. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. A good idea. <laughs> Any other comments on the playground? I think if you decide on the playground, I think the next step would be to have the engineers from here there as an expert and say, this is exactly where it's going to go. This is exactly how much it takes up. And then put that rendering together and say, here's exactly the footprint, the fence. We have an entire cost. So we raised 30000 So we need to come up with five or 10. We know what the gap is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my only comment is that we have supposedly people listening in. And uh, so I'd say that most of your comments are not going to be audible on the, ra on the, on the radio. And yours, Ryan, you'll not be audible at all if you don't get your ass off your chair and go stand up and use the microphone. Sir. <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> So I was, what I was mentioning was at the playground at this point, um, I think if you decide on the playground, 
that we could go through the feasibility for the engineers to look at um, square footage, exact location, fencing component, those kind of things. So you have an actual dollar figure. So, and I think between now and the next meeting, we can actually put that together. So you can make a final recommendation to city council. I think that would be a good plan. And the only other thing that I would introduce here that something that was in uh, Ms. Crawford's notes, but it didn't come up, I don't think, the other night, was a bike rack. And, you know, it seems eminently reasonable. I mean, it's not a big cost. It doesn't take a lot of space, but it would encourage people to take their bikes, which is what we want to do if we're going to be a more healthy community. I like it. So I, I don't know if that's something we want to look at now or defer to another time. That's up to you all. Yeah, and I've seen some of those bike racks that are just big, like loops, and so the kids play on them as well, uh, so that you can lock your bike to it. And there's maybe five of them, maybe. Two, Maddie is two a good. bike rider, so maybe yeah. she has firsthand. Yeah, I never know where to put my bike when I come down here, so that would be great. I and I, I'm assuming it's relatively, you know, inexpensive, so right. we should just do it. Well, I think that's something that can be done. Pre that could be done pretty quick, but yeah. I think we need to figure out playground first, and if we wanted to put it right next to the playground. But that's something that can be done probably operationally pretty quick. Can we ask the engineers to explore locations for the bike rack, Ryan? Uh, sure. As part of this exercise. Yeah. Okay. I think Thank so. Thank you. All right, so I think we would move forward with this. Let's, I would like to ask you to get the engineer report. So how do you want to do that? Do y'all want to vote on it or? Yeah. I think it's on the on the agenda uh, oh, for, towards I think it's a discussion five. and feedback and then y'all make a, okay. action, take action. Okay, we'll, we'll come back to that. Because um, if there's any other action you want for shade structure or something else, Right. To get more in detail and more feasibility than I need to know and tell the engineers, let's do it all at one time. Right, right, right. Any more discussion on the uh, playgrounds or bathrooms, shade structures? All right, let's move on. Uh, discussion of possible funding sources to address the Commons conceptual plan. Do uh, you have any ideas with the funding sources? We already talked about it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, between what the money's raised for the potential playground and then the American Rescue Plan funds, that's uh, viable dollars to use um, right now. Yeah. So, Ryan, uh, the mayor said, says he's got 30000 that we I could think use? Roughly, I think he's got commitments up to about 30000 right now. Okay, So good. I think that's through private donation and some corporate and uh, and I think he's working on asking, I believe, HEB as well, because there's a process. So. And Vic, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, your background and grants? Medical research grants. Grant writing. There's a lot of... Uh, oh, the button, sir. Okay, great. I write a lot of medical research grants, but uh, there's a lot of very common uh, similarities in, in writing all any type of grant as far as making it compelling and you know following the instructions. And um, so, actually, I did have a question regarding the those ARPA funds. Um, basically, are those in the bank now that we have those, or or is there a specific deadline? Do we, you need, we need to apply and you need to no no we, so, we it's to, sort of like a direct deposit okay so we um most cities actually larger cities got a direct deposit from directly from the treasury um since we're uh, have a smaller dole out um a smaller city i think anything under thirty thousand population got sent to the state okay and then we work through the state to get our money okay but um Last year, around August or September, is we got the first five hundred and fifty thousand. And did did you have to turn in a fairly detailed plan at that point to get the money at that at that point? There was a uh, there was some paperwork, some not necessarily an application because we knew we were going to get the funds. 
mm-hmm. but there was some uh, procedural paperwork that the fire chief had to do because it, I think it, if I recall, it was through TDM, the Texas Department of Emergency Management. And so he, as our emergency management officer, fire chief, worked through that process. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's kind of the one who does all the, the follow-up to report, um, which is pretty minimal. Um, well, I think when the ARPA first came out, there were some um, categories and um, strings tied to it to a certain right. extent. But, you know, after talking to tons of cities and finding out what they're using those dollars for, it's, you know, buying a new fire truck, buying a new anything across the board for the most part. Um, but to really answer your question, uh, I think next month is when um, I believe we received the second dole out, which is the 550,000. If not, we've already received, I'd have to check with Nora, but okay. So that, that'll basically in, in the adopt it. If we, when council adopts the budget Tuesday night, I think um, after what I've included in there right now, because taking the commons out, I've included um, purchases for the fire department and public works and emergency management. Um, that still leaves, um, I believe, about seven hundred thousand left right. from that What's, point. It's been my experience that because we did a, a couple of years ago, we did a conference grant to have a scientific conference, and it was pretty fairly competitive. But we had because we had already uh, had the conference a couple of years uh, before using some other funds, and, and so we knew how much it was going to cost basically, and. So we had a very detailed plan exactly what we were going to spend the money on. And the reviewers, they like that. So if we can include engineers' plans of um, number of shade structures, dimensions of it, mm-hmm. precisely what kind of playground, um, you know, as detailed as possible, then they'll, whoever's, next time whoever's giving the money out will see okay, this is just an idea that someone has that's not well developed yet, but it's well thought out and well constructed. And that's the kind of a key for writing grants is that you show them, you know what you're doing. Sure. And I think that that comes into play, like when most cities apply for certain grants, um, whether that's Texan Parks and Wildlife through the state or CDBG exactly. and those kind of things, because you, you they do require that technical um, documentation. Right. Uh, from this case. Um, and then most cities going through that actually have to come up with like a 10% match. Okay. You know, and we're not matching anything here. This money was directly given to the city. Um, we do have to keep obviously some, some detailed um, documentation of what is spent because they had broad categories on this. And so we just have to report back that X, Y, and Z has been spent. And here's the documentation and backup but, a progress report yeah but what, i think what you're referring to is when cities apply for grants and i know mr mccormick's familiar with this um in order to ensure you become a um or, or have the ability in future years to apply that you've crossed the t's and dotted the i's with those grants right um in order to, to receive because uh one of my cities where we did a, a tech a department of wildlife uh grant it was like a three-year process where you get funding right. so each year you had to provide all of the technical details for um at in this one city it was a multi-year funding because it was a multi-phase um sports uh park right. so they would dole out the money each year but you had to provide all of that information all of that paperwork That's all right. the details plus the city each year had to approve that percentage um, to match the grant. It sounds like an NIH R01 grant or something like that. that yeah. That's exactly what they do. They'll give you, a, they'll dole out a little bit of money and then you have to show the progress. And if you don't make sufficient progress, then they won't, they won't fund the whole thing. So they'll, yeah. they'll, they can cut you off. So in order to keep getting the entire three years or five years, you have to turn in your reports. And those are the kind of things that I'm, I'm familiar with. Um, so, you know, it's not just medical research, but it was for getting a conference mm-hmm. uh, approved and things like that. I and, think Ms. McCormick, you, t- you attended and, and, a couple so of the grant I, classes. I think you're, during your time when you're on council, you, you attended a couple of the grant workshops, I believe. Yeah, and yeah, 
a couple, three or four days of, of workshops. And my conclusion was that the effort required to maintain the grant was more than it was worth. <laughs> <laughs> some cities feel that way, but also some cities have a dedicated grant writer whose job it is to basically stay on top of those things. That's right. I, I actually teach a cor course for the at Lackland called Grantsmanship for Clinical Research. And it's part of this research education academy that we have. And so I give these grant writing workshops and, and a lot of the same fundamental principles would, would apply for the kind of grants that we would apply for here. And, you know, I'll be happy to help write and review and edit any of those, nice. you know, that, that we're doing. Again, my background is, is mostly in medicine and science and not in um, city public uh, uh, type works and things, but I live here and I, and I know I, and I've lived in Castle Hills for, for quite a while now. And um, I, I, uh, I if, being of my age and my vintage, I, uh, I think I know what would be, uh, I, I agreed with the, with the public the other night about uh, shade structures, places to sit, that's good for the elderly folks and then the playground for the younger folks, but, you know, everybody together. One thing that we didn't talk about, I guess we should mention is this community garden. We're going to talk about that a little bit as well. Um, but uh, anyway, sorry, I was long winded. No, on that. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, and, and in most cities, when they're trying to do something like this for their parks, go through the Texas park and wildlife, the grants. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to have certain things in place. Uh, most importantly, you have to have a open space master plan uh, for all of your parks. So if you have like 20 parks, you have to have those assessed and it determines your needs, you know, mm -hmm. the strengths and weaknesses of each individual park. And then you basically say, well, with this park, we want to do X, Y, and Z. Or the need is we don't have a place for the kids to play baseball or basketball. And so we're trying to put a a uh, phased project together and so that would that's kind of what they look for you know multi right. multi-phase projects over years so they can fund those and assist cities so very good yeah do you y'all want to talk about the um uh, garden a little bit more uh my vision for that was like a pollinator uh, native, you know, drought tolerant garden, low maintenance. Um, I think the idea of like a, everybody's lots are so big. The gardeners that we have in this, you know, community are probably already doing it. It's not like an urban area where people need a plot to have their own garden, you know? So I think, um, I, I don't know if that's what everybody else that was suggesting it envisioned, but I, I would think it would just be like, you know, flowers, native plants, low maintenance, not like a vegetable garden, you know, because people are doing that at home. Right. I honestly um, have thought about this a little bit in that I think it would be a great opportunity for more community involvement. And even like at the end of our blocks with those little, you know, there was a maybe getting together a team. I wouldn't want to do it. I'm going to say right now, but maybe a group of teens that yeah. need service hours or something, and they can help with, you know, either like the end of the block or something like that, or maybe a little boy scout troop that maybe gets a little piece and can do something with it or castle Hills mm -hmm. elementary can come over and have a spot. Um, I just think it's open to so many possibilities, but I agree with your, you know, I think, to start with for sure. I think that's the best thing. And like you said, I don't, I'm not a good gardener. I'm a black thumb person, but I love it and I want to <laughs> do it. So to me, if there's those opportunities, maybe to do little classes or like the mother's day thing where kids got to come and plant something and take it home. I think that's just a great opportunity for more community involvement and getting people involved in our community right. where they care about it to want to improve the community. Brian, right now, where could we put a small like 10 by 10 in the sun close to a water faucet? Close to a what? A water 
uh, spigot, like in the commons area. Just uh, if we, uh, you know, I would probably say the the back portion um, uh -huh. of the of the commons. Um, and and again, I thought the idea of doing that was when you expand on the the vacant the lot vacant over lot, that right, too, right, right. Um, because I think that's something that um, could be in addition to whatever amenity is put there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Incorporated. Ultimately, I do like the idea of the sort of boardwalk or trail that connects because I think if I, I would envision like you're connecting and you're going on the boardwalk and you come right off the boardwalk and there's a community garden and some type of exercise equipment or multi-sport or, mm -hmm. you know, I think that that would be a good addition to that area. Um and it's an area where you can plan out easier for a community garden, I see, because it's right. kind of raw over there versus trying to figure out where you're going to put it right. within the community, where, where you're going to put it along with all these other things here in the commons right now. Right, right, right. Because part of the, the uh, not say negative part of it, but the the com complaint or whatever right. was like, hey, we, we need, we may put a playground there, but we need as much space as we can for events. Right, right. You right. know, so we would just be taking up more and more of a footprint. Um, yeah, you want to make it cohesive. For everything. Yeah, and I think that's why on that original concept, the garden over there in that vacant lot was a great addition to whatever you put there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and the boardwalk too. Uh, we started, uh, or Public Works started cleaning the legustrums out. Oh yeah, that's know. cleared out right. everything. So, so what um, from that standpoint, where are you looking time wise to put a to put a boardwalk there to the um behind the maintenance yeah again i think um i, I think, think you got to figure out what's going to go in the vacant lot first before you connect mm -hmm. I, I thought we had talked we had talked in the past about paving part of that as a basketball court or a for pickle mall or whatever else you wanted to use it for, but you put down a, a square of asphalt and, and stripe it and you've got courts. Mm -hmm. And then you hang a basketball ring up there at one end, you got a basketball court. No, I think it's a great idea. I, I was just going off of some feedback I heard the other night where some people didn't think that anything related to a sports court was a good thing over there, but I'm, I don't see anything wrong with it. Mm -hmm. I, said, I thought they were, they were in favor of the sports court kind of idea. When, well, when we had the show of hands, very few hands went up favoring it. Really? Yeah. Well, the kind of temperatures we got around here, it doesn't make for <laughs> great daytime sports in the summer. I do like Mr. McCormick. You did get the option to build Disney World. So. Yes. <laughs> but I, I think when you start looking at the court, is it do we want to do asphalt or do we want to do what's sort of that? Um, they use that rubber type thing for outdoor sports courts. So. I think either option, I think that's a little more expensive. Um, I think it's easier to lay down a slab of concrete out there and start going uh, from a basketball court or transition even to a pickleball court. So Yeah, and I don't think we should let that question lie like that. I think as we proceed glacially with our comprehensive plan, we'll continue to ask that question. Because it's you know everybody that's heard about it so far thought of it, it was a good idea. I and you know I was surprised or didn't even think about the noise, and I thought, well, then certainly we can plant some kind of tree or something well, that blocks noise. And right? the resident, really the resident there, I think it's a matter of I think just getting with the resident there at the corner. Um, if they were, um, he was in favor of it. He was yes. So. so he, and there's a way to put up, like you said, there's you know, whether it's fencing or some kind of um, barrier to reduce that. Um, and and again, I can't see because of the close proximity to, to City Hall and PD here, if there's noise or someone out there because you put up a sign saying, hey, no play after eight or nine. Um, that could be easily a force from here with about 20 seconds with an officer going by. The other thing is, if you don't put any lights out there, it kind of cuts off yeah. play after dark. Mm -hmm. 
Well, most places have a timer. So when the lights are out and controlled by the city, there's no more play. And they're solar, most of them too, but. Just one last comment. You know, I think people look at noise in different ways. I know in, in our corner, we had a, a family move in a few years ago with young young people. The older folks had moved out and this wonderful young family came in and they put up a basketball hoop. And to me, that's, that's a great noise. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I used to be able to play basketball. But I mean, it was... It was. It's a joyful noise to me, perhaps to others, I don't know. But I, I could understand it could be a nuisance to some. Yeah, I like the noise from the school next to us. So it's it's like if you're not feeling good, you hear the kids playing outside. It's a nice, uh, I don't know, soul warming. <laughs> okay, well, let's... Um, that was three and four, basically, discussion and potential funding sources to address the common conceptual plan. Um, and, and, and don't forget about seed dollars, too. So if there's, like Mr. McCormick mentioned, lighting, um, mm -hmm. you could fund lighting improvements out of seed as well, because there's about 300 some thousand still in there. Right. And, and we're, uh, I forgot to mention the electrical um upgraded that was one of our things i remember uh upgraded electrical for like the band area um yeah rickston some early on when i got here we did sort of a quick assessment of the electrical like an assessment to where to put in um places right right um and then a capacity related to the building that yep, was done right um and i think rick used that but if you look in different areas he put more and more outlets to support the uh capacity okay. for for events out here but um i think definitely there's probably maybe a need in the future to expand on that mm -hmm. so especially if it's supporting a, another lot next to public works right 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 yeah okay um well let's move on to five discussion possible action on the prioritization of the common conceptual plan including future recommendations to city council. Um, in the, so I think right now is the playground um, that and solar panels um, that we want to prioritize this month. So you're referring to solar panels in conjunction with different shade structures? The, or the feasibility of Feasibility with shade structures as well as the existing structures. I think what you're looking for, Bernard, is a motion to invite Mr. Rapley to proceed with the engineers to study the idea of the playgrounds, looking at different possible locations, structures, and the incorporation of solar panels as for a large one as well as smaller ones, perhaps dotted throughout. And then with the solar panels, pardon? I'm sorry. The restrooms. Oh, the re oh gosh, yes, you're right, Cindy. Yeah, yeah, and looking into the restrooms as well. Uh, I think for the time being that we might consider just putting up a sign that the restrooms in, in the city hall are available mm -hmm. when we have an event outside, so that people know that they can come in to, at the center center doors and access the restrooms. Uh, I don't think uh, if we if we do want to down the way put in restrooms on the the east end of the city hall, uh, then we're not really we don't want really anyone to look at putting in a porta potty out in the, out right, in the right, commons right, right. or something else or building a, a, a restroom structure out there. So I, I'm thinking that. For the time being, an interim solution might be to put up signs when the restrooms are open. Right, right. When they're available for events and that sort of thing. That might solve part of the problem uh, because it appears that one of the issues may be that people are not aware that the restrooms in City Hall are available on Saturdays when we have events out there mm -hmm. or evenings. 
Uh, the other is when we when we go to the city, to the city council about a playground, uh, we may have a similar problem to the one we had in the, in this committee when we first started looking at playgrounds. The playground is the sort of thing that can expand and cover the whole damn city pretty quick if we let it get out of hand. And what we what we had in mind here, as I understand it, was a small playground in one corner of the commons rather than turning the commons into a whole playground. And it's important that the city council get that sense of our deliberations rather than that we just turn over to the city council an idea of putting a playground into the, into the commons and <laughs> let them decide what the limits might be. Uh, well, I think that's a good They're going to decide the limits anyway, but I think that we should provide them some guidance as to what we, what our concept was. It's a small playground. And one of the issues that was raised, I think uh, Bernard raised it a minute ago, is that we wanted to put in a, a fence area of some kind to enclose the playground. There are two good reasons for that. One is to keep the kids running out into the street. The other is to keep the passers-by from grabbing up a convenient kid and driving off with that kid. Right. And uh, both of those are really important considerations. Thanks, Kid. Well, I think it's important if um, they actually show we can have them develop sort of a rendering, mm -hmm. uh, sort of three-dimensional to show exactly the location, size, and uh, fencing, how it all would all look. Um, so it doesn't take up all of the commons. It just becomes a small section of the commons for use. So I'd like to, anybody have a motion? Would like okay, so I'll make a motion that we uh, recommend to the city council a uh, prioritization of, of projects, starting with the uh, uh, playground, the uh, Shade structure. I think there was discussion during our last meeting about the linear park, and I don't know how to how to get to that. But we asked them for a show of hands on linear parks, and there were about the same number of hands, about the same people that showed up. And you find that over the years, I've watched the people that show up at our meetings. It's always the same group of people. I mean, you'll, you'll see a crowd, but it's always the same crowd. And out of the 15, uh, 1,500 families and 4,500, 4,000 people that live in town, we have maybe 100 that come to meetings on any kind of regular basis or pay attention or participate or volunteer to do anything. Uh, there's some that are notable participants and volunteers, and there's some that Never show up, never say anything, never don't don't really have an interest in local politics. Uh, so we have uh, the idea of the playground. Uh, do we want to talk about that linear park thing, Jack, with the city council or not? I think it's going to get a little too complicated, Skip. I think we need to make a little more progress on the, on the concept itself and how we, we plan to execute it. Um, we didn't talk much about it the other night, so I'd be inclined to focus on the uh, the playground, the shade structure, and yes, bring in the restrooms and the solar panels because there seemed, did seem to be some support for them. But I think we need to defer to the plan, to uh, our comprehensive plan to to work well, on the. What we park. need to do is to decide what prioritization we want to have of the parts of the various projects. Playground for sure, shade structures. Uh, we're not going to put in a pavilion or restrooms at the moment. Uh, community garden. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure I'm in favor of putting up a garden for everybody to come and raise their vegetables. I think that if there are groups that want to volunteer for an area that we give, for example, the area right around the little library mm -hmm. stand could be a nice place for somebody to put up flowers if they were interested in doing that. But uh, I'd be I'd be inclined to say that we could give people a corner or a place or a tree to to embellish with mm -hmm. plantings or flowers or whatever. 
something of that sort. Well, I think if you'd like, uh, get the engineers and their consultant going pretty quick on the playground because of the dollars it's raised right now and the commitments and then have them do the shade structure in combination with the solar. Uh, and then long-term or not say long-term over the next couple months, they could start looking at the feasibility of what a bathroom structure might cost as well. Um, I think, again, you've tried to figure out where all these things would go. Um, right. It's kind of key. So. It's, it's really, kind of, it makes for a really complicated motion. I don't know how to make it. Well, yeah. So I think prioritizing on the playground right now uh, and then the, like I said, for the engineer report and the shade structure, right? Those those two are, I think, um, near near term. And I also see how fast that could probably be done, which is probably relatively quick. And then I think about funding because, again, um, having those funds available right now and then council to be able to make a decision um, with those funds currently available could expedite not only the playground, but any shade structure in the coming months, I believe. And it seems like if we say prioritize the playground, we're including in that, that uh, bike rack and the fencing with that. Yes, and that so would be that all inclusive. Covers, right. Yeah. And that's a good point. I never even my time here and thought about a bike rack out there. Mm -hmm. That's probably something that um, could already been ordered, installed, but it makes sense to put it next to the playground. Okay, so someone want to make a motion? Okay, I move that we recommend to the city council that we that they consider the uh, implementation of a plan to build a small playground in one corner of the commons to add a bike rack and uh, to consider the installation of uh, shade uh, structures of some kind and possible. Uh, use of the shade structure as support for solar panels. That's it. I second. All in favor? So we have council unanimous. Did you have a vote? Oh, he, yeah, he doesn't. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Liaison. <laughs> sorry. Great. So, so that's approved. Uh, Ryan, thank you for uh, working on that so quickly and getting it to council um that uh, so i, I kind of envision it depending on um pushing our engineers and the consultant that um we can try to work for next month say october um or as quickly as it's ready for y'all to review um and take another look at the the the, the location the numbers and y'all as a parks and projects feel comfortable with it and then say, uh, send it off to council the following month. Right. Okay. So. I think uh, in looking at the calendar, correct me if I'm wrong, please, Ryan, but I think the next council meeting would be on the 11th of October, Tuesday evening. That's the second Tuesday in October. Yes, sir. So if we had a meeting on the 8th and to, you know, say one way or another. Right on the recommendation, do you think your guys could have enough sketches for the group to review by the 8th? Which is I, I, roughly a month. Yeah, I mean, uh, we kind of already have a price on the playground. So it's them coming up with- um, Well, the location and- Location, and yeah. it's important to have them put together that rendering to actually see and envision what it mm -hmm. looks like right, right. and where it's located. Um, and I'm not an engineer nor a designer, but I think that's something that could be put together pretty quick, in my opinion. Okay. So, well, I the quicker the know. better. I mean, if you can get it done in the next couple of weeks, maybe you could just send it to everybody. Yeah. I think most importantly, our I, I can let them know the 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 timeline. Yeah. If okay. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. They work for us. Yeah. So, um. We 
discussed and we took some action. And uh, the next one, uh, discuss and announce the date and time of the next meeting. Um, October 8th, uh, 10 o'clock. Does that sound good to everyone? All right. Um, so our next meeting will be on October 8th at 10 o'clock here in the uh, courtroom council chambers <laughs> at uh, 10 o'clock. Um, anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? You need one? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> I second. Great. Uh, thank y'all. Thank you for uh, coming today and helping out.